Padalas ng padalas ng padalas na natitinig ngayon sa bukang bibig na maraming tao, lalo na mga may asawa, the words separation, annulment, divorce. Kaya napakarami din lagi natitinig natin topics about broken marriages, broken homes, broken children, broken lives. Ano ang matututunan mula sa Biblia tungkol sa mga bagay na ito? Marriage is for togetherness. Yan ang pag-aaral natin at nawakasihan tayo ng Espiritu ng Diyos. Tama namin, salamat sapagat maaari kaming uh, sumangguni sa iyo. Sa inyo pong mga karunungan na magiging gabay at liwanag ng buhay ng bawat isa. Turuan niyo kami, Lord. Yung mga may asawa, mag-aasawa pa lang, nahiwalay, mga walang asawa. Turuan niyo kami kung ano ang mga magbubuting gawin sa ganitong mga issues ng buhay namin. And now, Lord, as we approach your throne of power and grace, we ask you to cleanse us, forgive us, enable us to hear you. Be our teacher and preacher. May your voice set us free, empower us, and may your voice lead us unto greater godliness. In the name of your Son, Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Si Solomon na maituturing na parang pinakamalapit ang turo niya sa mga turo ng Panginoong Yesus, what you might call the Jesus of the Old Testament, ang kanyang major teaching in life is enjoy life. At ang Panginoong Yesus, centerpiece teaching niya, sabi niya, I came that you might have life, a full and abundant life. So one of the best ways to maximize enjoyment in life is through intimate human relationship like in marriage. Maraming paraan para maging masaya, para maging kumpleto, pero isa sa mga pinakamatibay at pinaka-common na paraan ay yung magkaroon ka ng kapartner sa buhay. Partner na kinikilala ng lipunan, tinatanggap ng iyong pananampalataya, partner na hindi mo itinatago, ikinukubli, partner na magbibigay sa iyo ng kasama, ng guidance, maging ng pagtutuhid. And the building blocks of human partnerships and marriage are actually laid in the Bible. First of all, God does not want people to live alone. Genesis 2, 18-24 The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife and they become one flesh. Natural, dahil nag-iisa pa lang si Adan talaga noon, kay asawa, kay kaibigan, kay ano, wala naman talaga siyang kasama. Sabi ng Panginoong Diyos, hindi naman mabuting nag-iisa ang tao. And this is the first not good comment of God recorded in the Bible. Lahat it was good and God saw that it was like this and it was good. Pero sabi niya, it is not good that man should be alone. Kaya magkakaroon siya ng asawa at ihiwalay siya sa kanyang mga magulang at makikipisan sa kanyang asawa. The leaving here of parents emphasizes the new belongingness. It does not teach neglect of parents. Marami kasi mga sobrang literal ang pagbabasa sa Bible, pag nag-asawa, kahit yung magulang nag-iisa, byuda na o byudo, walang kasama, may sakit, na iniiwan pa rin dahil yun daw kalooban ng Diyos. That is not the teaching. The teaching only emphasizes that from being attached primarily to parents, the married person becomes attached primarily to the spouse, but it doesn't mean that you detach from your parents. Para lang malinaw kung sino talaga ang kapartner mo sa buhay, kung sakaling dumarating yung panahon na lumalabo at hindi nalilinawan yun, dahil ginugulo talaga ng mga taong concerned, dahil gusto nilang manggulo sa relasyon yung mag-asawa. God wants people to have partners. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 11, Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fail, one will lift up the other. But woe to one who is alone 
and falls and does not have another to help. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Mas may nandaw may kasama. Kung natumba kami, magbangon man lang sa'yo. Merong aake sa'yo kung kailangan mo. At kung sobrang ginaw na nararanasan sa maraming bansa, hindi sa atin, eh na mainam naman daw na meron kang katabi. Dahil ang body heat ng katabi mo ay makakatulong para hindi ka maging yelo, hindi ka manigas sa lamig. In other words, maraming practical purposes and maraming practical advantages na may kasama sa buhay. To strengthen togetherness, God designed desire between partners. Hindi masama ang pagnanais, pagnanasa na makasama ang iyong asawa. Genesis 3.16, to the woman, he said, your desire will be for your husband. So hahanap-hanapin mo ang iyong asawa, iibig-ibigin mong siya yung makatabi, makapiling, makaisa, but not to blossom for anyone else's husband, and definitely not to blossom for anyone who is not her husband. Malinaw, pag nanasa ka, hahanap-hanapin mo ang iyong sariling asawa. Hindi asawa ng iba, o hindi naman yung hindi mo naman asawa. Desire is God-given. So do, do not demonize desire, but just stay focused on the right object. Yung iba namang sobrang relihiyoso, lahat ng uri na lamang ng mga ganitong damdamin at desire, eh minamasama. Basta nakatuon sa tamang object, it is sacred, it is God-given. Isine-celebrate nga ang ganyang uh, desire, yung ganyang love sa Song of Solomon. In fact, in chapter 2, verse 4 to 7, we have an example. You led me to your banquet room and showered me with love. Refresh and strengthen me with raisins and apples. I am hungry for love. Put your left arm under my head and embrace me with your right arm. Young women of Jerusalem, promise me by the power of deer and gazelles never to awaken love before it is ready. Ang mga pag-uulat at ang mga nakasulat sa Song of Solomon, sometimes called Song of Songs, ito kung sa celebration of physical love between a couple. And it is never malicious, it is never bad, because God designed our human bodies, and God designed that there should be desire, and but that desire must have a correct object. At sinabi dito ng tinig ng babaeng nagsasalita sa part na ito ng Song of Solomon, sabi mga kababaihan ng Jerusalem, at siyempre babaihan kahit saan, mga kababaihan, huwag niyong mapukaw-pukaw, huwag niyong magising-gising, no? Ang pag-ibig, ang pagnanasa, bago kayo maging tunay na handa. Disastrous. Pag ang aga-aga pa, ikising na yung desire mo, once awakened, love or desire is to be satisfied by the partner. That is a godly design. Love and desire must be watched over, managed, and controlled. Kung hindi, magkakagulo ang mundo. Pagka ang desire mo hindi naman for your own spouse, for your own partner, Ano mangyayari? Mga agaw ka ng partner ng may partner, pagtataksilan mo ang partner mo dahil may desire ka sa iba, magkakagulo-gulo. That is why premarital sex is forbidden in scripture. Because you should not awaken desire before you are ready. And what does readiness mean? That you have your own lawfully wedded spouse. Eh, kabata-bata mo, wala ka pang tunay na asawang sa'yo, gigisingin mo na ang lahat ng iyong damdamin. Pag naman nagising na yan, ayaw na niya matulog hanggang mamatay ka. So, anong mangyayari? Mapapalisa ka, mag-ahanap, kung saan-saan. And when there is no legitimate partner, it seeks enjoyment from just anyone. And the result 
is social chaos. Pero huwag nating mamasamayin yung desire. Meron siyang tamang lugar. Sa mga mayroon ng mga asawa, meron kayong partner, kinikilala nyo, kinikilala kayo, kinikilala ng mga nasa paligid sa inyo, walang gulo kung sino talaga, alam ng lahat ito ang inyong partner, be and stay desirable to your spouse. Kaya kumisan may wisdom yung mga duot ng mga Arabong babae, yung burka o yung abaya, nakasuklo bang isang pagkalaki, laking itim na tela sa katawan ng babae, at sa bahay lang niya, sa piling ng kanyang asawa, inuubad yon dahil hindi naman niya pinapakita ang mga iba't ibang bahagi ng kanyang katawan sa ibang lalaki, eh kung mag-desire lang sa kanya, hindi naman niya asawa, yan ang mangyayari, pinagkagulo. May wisdom din yon Minsan lang nga, extreme yung paggamit. Anong mapapala mo na ipaghalandakan mo sa buong barangay ang iba't ibang bahagi ng iyong katawan pag nasaan ka ng lahat, habol-habulin, pagkatapos hindi ka naman asawa nila, so ano magiging mangyayari sa'yo, magiging asawa ka ng bayan? o sasabikin mo ang lahat pagkatas hindi mo naman sila i-accommodate hanggang sila'y magkaulululul at mabaliw-baliw sa pagnanasa sa'yo, magulo. Kaya itinuturo sa scripture, ikalang ang katawan, huwag masyado yan ipakita kung kanikanino na hindi mo naman asawa. Kasi magulo ang magiging bunga niya. Bilang pag-alang din ang babae sa kanyang asawang lalaki at gano'n din naman ang lalaki sa kanyang asawang babae hindi niya ipinasisilip, ipinapakita kung kanikanino ang mga bahagi ng kanyang katawan, lalo ang mga masiselan. Kasi what's the point in arousing people when you're not going to bed with them anyway because they are not your spouse? Dapat ang lahat may kaayosan. Kung ang pagkakaroon ng partner ay mahalaga at nagbibigay ito ng napakalalim, gandang kasiyahan sa buhay, kung gayon, dapat itong alagaan. Dapat ito ipagtanggol mula sa iba't ibang mga panganib at banta na nanggagaling sa iba't ibang taong hindi mo naman nasawa. Now, the partnership is God's gift. It is a favor to be enjoyed from God. Yung partnership na ganyan, regalo ng Diyos. So, hindi dapat nagiging problema kasi regalo yan ng Diyos. Pero maraming regalo, pag hindi mo inalagaan, hindi mo inaayos ang paggamit, nagiging problema. Napaka- favorable ng pagtingin ng Bible sa pagkakaroon ng asawa ng tao. Deuteronomy 24 verse 5, Moses said to Israel, If a man and a woman have been married less than one year, he must not be sent off to war or sent away to do forced labor. He must be allowed to stay home for a year and be happy with his wife. Alam niyo mga lalaki noong unang panahon, pag dinawag ka patungo sa gera, drop everything, fight for your country. At pagka may project ang gobyerno, ang hari, hiningan ka ng forced labor, trabahong walang bayad, kahit malayo yung job site, punta ka. Pero sabi ni Moses, exempted ang mga lalaking bagong kasal. Isang taon ang pulot gata. One year ang honeymoon. Hindi sila isasali sa mga gera at hindi sila isasali sa forced labor. Such importance was attached to marital bliss by the ancient Israelites. Not to mention the importance they give to procreation because of the population hungry Jews. Lagi nila gustong dumami dahil lagi sila nakikipag-gera. Therefore, mahalaga na pagbigyan mga mag-asawa na makapagsarilinan ng isang buong taon. Kaya masaklap yung kakakasal pa lang ngayon, bukas mag abroad na. After one week, mag abroad na. Nauunawa natin na pangangailangan ng mga tao sa trabaho. Pero yung ganyan mga uri ng paglalayo, hindi yan marriage friendly. Hindi yan ang dapat policy. Pag kami nanliligaw sa'yo, anong balak mo sa'kin, paano tayo mabubuhay? Eh, pagkakasal natin, mag-a-abroad ako, eh, huwag yun ang pakasalan niya. Ba't pa kayo nagpakasal? Sa hangin, sa anino, sa papel? May kasal kayo sa turing, wala naman kayong kasiping? Bakit pa? Dapat ko naghihiwala yung mag-asawa, may planong sandali lang ito, kukunin kita agad, o 
magbabayad lang ako ng ganito, o may ipon nila tayo, then uuwi na ako. Hindi na yung, kailan ka uwi sa Pilipinas? Hanggang May na lang ako dito sa Saudi Arabia. Yung pala hanggang May ilangis. Eh, hindi na maubos-ubos yung langis na yan. So, tumanda na ang lahat, uuwi ka na lang na matanda na rin, o namatay ka, nakakahon, ganun ba yun? Kaya hindi tayo pabor dyan sa policy ng gobyerno natin to export people. Dapat tinuan ang pag-gobyerno sa Pilipinas para ang tao hindi naaalis, magtatrabaho dito, we will become prosperous, kasama mong asawa mo, uuwi ka sa asawa mo paggabi, magkasama kayo pagka weekend, hindi yung once a year lang kayo magkita o once in two years, hindi ganun yun. Hindi natin inuusig ang may mga trabaho sa malalayo, pero huwag niyong gawing sobrang matagal kung kailangan kailangan nyo. Mahalaga. Sabi sa Proverbs 5.18, Be happy with the wife you married when you were young. Siyempre, ang kausap dito, ibig sabihin, medyo may edad na yung lalaki. Sabi sa Proverbs 5.18, ng New Revised Standard Version, Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice in the wife of your youth. Marami namang lalaki, they only rejoice in the youth of their wife. Hindi ganun, in the wife of your youth. Kung sinong pinakasalan mo ng bata ka, kahit nagtandaan na kayo at lumating na sa lupa yung baba niya, siya pa rin dapat ang i-rejoice mo because she is the wife of your youth. So sabi, magsama kayo, mag-enjoy kayo sa buhay. Yan ang kaloob sa inyo ng Panginoon. Be happy, but not with someone, not your wife or husband. Not with the partner of someone else. Because your happiness will be at other people's expense. Anong paliwanag ang ibibigay mo sa Diyos na masaya kayo dahil inagaw nyo ang kasiyahan nyo sa dapat at tamang may-ari? Kahit pabalibalik na rin mo ang mundo, ano man ang drama mong ibigay, hindi mo pa rin yan mapapanagutan o mapapanindigan. Exodus 20.14 You shall not commit adultery. In Exodus 20.17, pangalawa on the same topic in the Ten Commandments, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife. Ecclesiastes 9.9 is so clear. Life is short and you love your wife, so enjoy being with her. This is what you are supposed to do as you struggle through life on this earth. Maiksi ang buhay, mahal mo ang asawa mo, ano di kayo magkasama? Ito ang dapat niyong gawin sa maiksing buhay na ito habang sinusuong niyo ang napakaraming hirap ng buhay. Ibig sabihin, susuongin niyo ang hirap ng buhay na magkasama, magkatabi, magkahawak kamay. Kung maghihiwalay, huwag tagalan. Huwag maadik sa malaking income kahit hindi kayo magkasama. That's why overseas and far away work is not marriage friendly. Of course, marami tayong kilala na napaka mga takilang babae na kahit dito nag-iisa yung asawa, ang layo-ilayo, ang tagal-tagal, ang tinutino, may naipupundar talaga. At hindi sila gumagawa ng kaaliwas-wasan. Pero marami rin naman tayong nababalitaan at nakukumpirma rin naman na naliligaw ng landas. Dahil na-away ka na yung desire, tapos wala naman yung asawa, so yung una magdaan yun na. Ang una pong magdaan na ka-Adidas, Lord, yun na ang tugon sa aking mga pangangailangan. So kung wala si Mr. Right, si Mr. Right now will do. At alam natin yan, it is happening. That's why we always implore people, if you're going to separate for financial reasons, don't separate too long. Huwag sobrang tagal. What will happen to the natural desires? What will you do with the natural desires? When mismanaged, long-distance work or prolonged separation could be a major threat to marriage. Ang gobyerno natin, laging ipinagahalandakan ng napakaraming padala na pera ng mga OFWs para makurakot ng mga magdanakaw para maipangtapal nila sa incompetence of this government and the many administrations before to provide good opportunities for our own people. Puro figures, bilyones na dolyar. Nagre-report na sila kung ilang mag-asawa naghiwalay. 
inire-report ba nila kung ilang mga bata ang lumaking walang magulang na naglilimlim sa kanila, naliligaw na landas, nagiging mga rebelde. Inire-report ba nila ang ilang mga unwanted teen pregnancies dahil walang sumusubaybay sa mga bata? That is the other side of the otherwise rosy OFW story. Maraming at malaki ang social cost. Not to mention the moral cost. Lalo sa mga hindi ma-control ang kanilang mga desire. Long distance work could be anti-family. It is anti-family, actually. But not to condemn ourselves. Mabuti nga ang mga mamamayan natin are masisipag, talented, at natatanggap magtrabaho sa ibang bansa. Kaya hindi tayo nang mamatay sa gutom. Pero ang dami naman foreigner dumadating dito, nakasanto lang at nakabrief, tapos yumayaman lahat dito, nagyayamanan sa bansa natin. Bakit tayo hindi yumaman sa sarili nating bayan? Bakit kailangan foreigner lang yumaman dito? Bakit ang dami-daming bansa sa Africa, sa ibang parts of Asia, sobrang mas mahirap kaysa sa atin, hindi naman sila nag-export ng labor? Sa bagay, baka hindi sila qualified. Pero buhay din sila. Turo ng Diyos na mag-asawa, dapat magkasama. Gawing goal. If there is this necessity to be separated, differentiate necessity from want, from like, from desire, from luxury, and struggle through life together. Kung may haharapin, susuungin na hirap sa buhay, kailangan magkasama. Nakikita niyo ba ang social cost pag magkakahiwalay? Ang isang tao nagtatrabaho abroad, hindi na nakaka-attend ang mga birthday ng anak, graduation, mga skip sa school, ng mga maliliit na mga mahahalagang bagay. Sandali na lang umuwi. So pag nagbabakasyon, pag nakakita masama ang asal ng mga anak na hindi maituit, hindi mapagalitan dahil malayo na nga loob sa kanya, di lalong lalayo pa. So anong gagawin ng magulang? Susuhulan ng anak, ibibili ng ganito, ibibili ng ganon para ma mahulog ang loob. Ang nangyayari, ang tingin lang ng mga bata sa magulang, provider of material things, lugi, yung ang tagal-tagal na nasa abroad. Pag isang lalaki naglalaba na mamalansya, na may malengke, nagluluto, naglilipit, mag-isa, dalawampung taon, tatlampung taon, tapos pag uwi mo, malalayo loob sa'yo ng mga anak mo. At baka na wala pa yung asawa mo. Anong uuwian mo? Isang bunggalong nakasanglapa. Kung hindi na ibenta. Hindi naman lahat yun ang kwento. Pero maraming ganon. Iwasan natin yan. Try to see what you can do na magkasama. Hindi dapat first choice ang maglayo agad. Yun dapat ang last choice. Proverbs 18.22 A man's greatest treasure is his wife. She is a gift from the Lord. Yung kasama niyo ang wife niyo, tingnan niyo nga. Hindi ba talaga ang treasure? Not money, not big income earned away from her. Or reverse it from your husband if the wife is the one who is away. Proverbs 18.22 ng New Revised Standard Version. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Proverbs 19.14 You may inherit all you own from your parents, but a sensible wife is a gift from the Lord. Pwedeng ang dami mong manahin sa magulang mo, mabuti, pero yung matinong asawa, regalo yan ang Panginoon. Dapat pahalagahan. So put premium value to your spouse, be it husband or wife. The partnership should be spent in togetherness. Pero text ng text, I love you. I love you pala, bakit wala ka rito sa tabi ko? Dapat gumagawa tayo ng paraan para hindi itinetext, kundi ibinubulong mo sa tenga ko na nararamdaman ko pa yung mainit mong hininga habang ibinubulong-bulong mo ang I love you. Ganun ang gusto kong mangyari. At dapat yun ang goal. Separation should be avoided and if inevitable for a while, Minimized. Paiksiin. 1 Corinthians 9, 4-5 Sabi ni Paul, Do we not have the right to our food and drink? Do we not have the right to be accompanied by a believing wife? As do the other apostles and the brothers of the Lord and Cephas? 
Eh, wala pa kaming karapatan na sa aming mga pagmimisyon, pagpupunta noon dito ay magsama ng asawa. Kasi ang context nito, sila Pedro at yung mga ibang mga disciples, pag nagmimisyon sila, kasama nila kanilang asawa at supported yon ng church. So sabi ni Paul, hindi din pa ako entitled dyan. But of course, what we know about Paul is that he was unmarried naman until his dying day. But he was just saying, and what we like to get from what he said was that, yes, even in missions, dapat kasama yung asawa. Unfriendly naman to family yung mga churches na nagpapadala ng mission tapos yung lalaki lang ang lalakad na iiwan yung babae. Kung prolonged missions, dapat kasama. Pati mga kumpanya, i-assign ka sa dulo ng daigdig tapos malayo sa pamilya mo. Kaya dapat, ang galing ka, mahusay, qualified. So you can demand na kasama ko dapat ang asawa ko at mga anak. Marami na tatanong sa inyong lingkod sa Facebook Naisama ko naman po ang aking asawa at mga anak dito abroad sa Middle East kasi allowed naman ako na gawin yun. Kaya lang po, konti lang kasi save namin kasi ang gastos dito. Ipapadala ko na lang ba uli ang mga bata sa Pilipinas para alagaan ang mga lola? Ipapadala mo yung mga bata sa Pilipinas para lumaki ang savings mo. Eh, ba't di mo bilangin yung loss kung lumalaki silang di mo kasama? Bakit hindi mo bilangin as savings yung Araw-araw nagkikita kayo, sabay-sabay kayo nakakapaghapunan, kahit hindi kayo masyadong marami na si-save. Alin ba talaga ang mahalaga? Yung pera o yung pagsasama-sama ninyo? Kaya lagi ko ipinapayo, well, kahit konti lang na si-save nyo, mabuti magkakasama kayo. Kesa hindi. Kumisa kasi, save ka ng save dahil pinauwi mo sila. Pampiyansa mo lang pala dahil magkakakaso yung tao o pampa-ospital dahil kung ano-anong nangyayari sa kanya ng mga hiwaga dahil hindi mo nababantayan. 1 Corinthians 7, 4-5 Tungkol na naman ito sa pagiging physically together. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. Likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Do not deprive one another except perhaps by agreement for a set time to devote yourselves to prayer and then come together again so that Satan may not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Alam natin kung anong topic dito. Physical relations. Physical matrimonial intimacy. At sabi dito ni Pablo, kayong mga babae, wala kayong otoridad sa inyong katawan, ang asawa niyong lalaki ang meron. At kayo rin mga lalaki, wala kayong otoridad sa inyong sariling katawan. Ang asawa niyong babae ang may-ari sa inyo. Wala kayong karapatang ipahiram, ipahingi, ipagamit ang inyong mga katawan sa ibang tao. Sa asawa niyo lang yan. At kung ang katawan mo lalaki ay pag-aari ng iyong babae, ng iyong asawang babae, lalo naman ang iyong bulsa, yung katawan mo nga kanya, eh di yung income mo rin, di ba? May mga lalaki kasi sa sabi sa babae, kita ko to, trabaho ko to. Ha? Mag-asawa tayo. If the Bible tells me that I own your body, lalo na ang bulsa mo. Pero siyempre, dapat matino naman yung babae sa pagkastos to para hindi ka pagtaguan ng pera at hindi ka pagkaitan. Pero ang mag-asawa ay mag-asawa. You share everything no matter who is making the money. Huwag namang abusuhin ng saka ng tamad na asawa. No? na wala siyang contribution sa income kasi ang laki-laking gumastos. Of course, meron ding mga regulasyon tungkol dyan. But the center of our study now is, sabi niya, huwag niyong tatanggihan ng isa't isa pag lumalapit sa inyo. Kinakalapit ka ng alas dos ng umaga, huwag mo sabihin, I have a headache. Maglagay ka ng bolsa di yelo. Ang sabi dito ni Paul, kung kayo man ay tatanggi sa isa't isa, Tiyak inyo na dahil lang mananalangin kayo, mag-aayuno kayo, at nagkasundo kayo na for a short time, walang ganyan-ganyan, dahil tayo magpe-pray, tayo magre-retreat. Pero sabi niya, huwag yung tanggalan kahit retreat. Magbalikan kayo agad sa isa't isa, dahil the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour, and many of you will fall away because of your lack of self-control. So may asawa ang tao para doon niya ipuhos ang lahat ng lagnat at init ng mundo. Wala nang excuse para humana pa ng iba kung meron ka namang asawa. At huwag kakalimutan ng asawa ang kanyang tungkulin na to refuse. Unless of course for health reasons or for other reasons that to be 
valid but not for an extended time. Duty yun. Of course, it should not be looked at as duty. It is privilege. But sometimes, it's duty. And don't forget that it could also be duty. So do your duty. Kaya ka nga may asawa. Kung ayaw mo ng ganong-ganong duty, pues, maging single ka all your life. You're entitled to that. But once you are married, you are duty-bound to please each other. Each other. Both ways. Hindi lang yun mag-isa. So couples should be available to each other. Never to outsiders. Couples should satisfy each other, not refuse each other. Pagkating na dinitip ang mga teaching na yan, maraming marital problems ang malulutas. The partnership should be lifelong. It should not be broken. Assurance of lifelong commitment inspires both partners to give their best to the partnership. Pag alam mong panghabang buhay ito, ibibigay mo na yung lahat-lahat. Kaya ulitin natin ang Matthew 19, 5-6. Jesus said, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. And the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Nothing should separate a couple. All right, let's add no one, no other people, including themselves. Not distance, not ideology, not work, not in-laws. Napakaraming mga dumadaing ang asawa nila abroad. Ito sila, ah, naiwan dito. Ang biyanan walang ginawa kundi siraan ng siraan si manugang doon sa asawa abroad. Tapos ang hinala ng manugang gusto kasi niya ang biyanan sa kanya mapunta ang remittance. Kumisa naman talagang yung asawa, sobrang daming himalang ginagawa. Nagsusubog na tuloy yung mga magulang nitong nasa abroad kasi naaawa sila. Dahil nawawaldas ang kita. Sino man ang guilty, yun ang dapat magbagong loob. Pero hindi dapat pagkiwalayin. Because God hates divorce. Yung God hates divorce na yan, very misunderstood. Sobrang misunderstood, therefore, misleading. Malachi 2.16, I hate divorce, says the Lord God of Israel, and I hate a man's covering himself with violence as well as with his garment, says the Lord Almighty. So, kinamumuhihan daw ng Diyos ang divorce. Pagkatapos niya, kinamumuhihan daw niya ang pagbibihis ng isang lalaki ng violence na parang ito ang kanyang damit. In other words, violence is associated with divorce. Malakay 2.16 is further understood when you read the contemporary English version. The Lord God, all-powerful of Israel, hates anyone who is cruel enough to divorce his wife. So take care never to be unfaithful. So here, it is not divorce itself that is hated by God, but God hates men who use their power as men to divorce their wives and put them to a great disadvantage. Nung araw kasi, lalo sa Israel, ang divorce, lalaki lang ang nag initiate At ang lalaki, sabihin lang sa inyo, ayoko na sa iyo, divorce na kayo. Kahit sa maraming ancient religions, sa Middle East, tatlong beses lang sabihin ng lalaki sa asawa, ayoko na sa iyo, ayoko na sa iyo, ayoko na sa iyo. Wala na, tapos ang kasal. At ginagamit ng mga lalaki ang issue na ito ng divorce, yung power, alam mo, may nagusto sila ibang babae, hindi divorce nila yung asawa nila ngayon. Papakasal na nila yung babaeng yun para ma-enjoy nila itong babaeng ito ng ilang araw. Tapos hindi divorce nila ulit. Pwede nila balikan yung asawa nila o pumuha na sila iba-iba. This is the divorce that God hates. A kind of divorce that is capricious, that is one way it benefits only the men, and it puts so many men, so many women, in horrible situations. They get disempowered. They get disinherited. Then they become single, and then there's a stigma of society na sila ay divorcee, and therefore, tatanda na lang sila na wala na sila kasama sa buhay dahil inaabuso sila ng kanila mga husbands. This is the context of the God hates divorce thing. It's a very pro-weak teaching. 
ayaw ng Panginoon na merong naapusong tao dahil may makapangyarihan na ibinigay sa kanya ng lipunan yung kapangyarihan na yun tapos gagamitin niya selfishly. God hates divorce because and when it is cruel to the woman or to the weak party. If you're going to stretch the application to present day realities, hindi naman laging babae ngayon yung weak kung isan yung lalaki. So sino man ang makapangyarihan at gagamitin yung kapangyarihan na yun para hiwalayan yung kanyang asawa dahil lang gusto niya o meron siya ibang naiibigan, yun ang divorce na ayon ng Panginoon. This is what the Old Testament divorce was all about. Because Old Testament divorce was only pro-men. It was usually capricious and oppressive. Kaya sabi niya, I hate anyone who is cruel enough to divorce his wife. Never to be unfaithful, sabi, us to be cruel. God wanted to save women, the weak, from marital oppression. Now, question is this. What if the divorce, what if it is the divorce that would save the weak from marital abuse, oppression, and violence? Kaya, ayaw ng Panginoon ng divorce kasi may naapi, may nakakawawa, may nagdi-disempower. Paano kung Inaapi ka, kinakawawa, sinasaktan, inuuwian ng sari-saring venereal disease, inaabuso. Will God still hate divorce if you wanted a divorce? When it is the divorce now that will be the tool to free you from oppression, from being disempowered, that is a very interesting study. Kasi yung mga ibang mahilig dun sa God hates divorce, magpapakounsel ka sa isang Christian counselor, may tatak na ng plancha yung mukha mo dahil pinlancha ka ng asawa mo, naputol na isang kamay mo dahil pinagaan niya, pinapasok-pasok ka ng sigarilyo, ang dami-dami mong venereal disease dahil sobrang pampapabae niya, tapos hihingi ka ng divorce, sasabihin sa inyo ng counselor, God hates divorce, don't do it. Parang mali ang application. God hates divorce that oppresses the innocent. What if it is the divorce that will set the innocent free from such oppression? Will God still hate it? Think about it. Napakahalaga. Because misreading leads to misinterpretation, to misapplication, and to oppressive religion. Misreading leads to misleading. Malakay 2.14-16 sa pagpapatuloy ng isyo ng divorce. And why isn't God pleased with divorce? It's because he knows that each of you men has been unfaithful to the wife you married when you were young. You promised that she would be your partner, but now you have broken that promise. Now you are wanting a divorce. Didn't God create you to become like one person with your wife? And why did he do this? It is so that you would have children and then lead them to become God's people. Don't ever be unfaithful to your wife. The Lord God, all-powerful of Israel, hates anyone who is cruel enough to divorce his wife. So take care never to be unfaithful. So what divorce that God hates? It is a divorce that is premised on unfaithfulness. A divorce that a man wants so that he could play around with other women and get rid of this woman that is already tired of but he promised to be the wife of his life. And God said, I hate anyone who is cruel enough to do this. Pangatawanan ninyo ang sinumpaan ninyo. Hindi ko man nagbagong isip nyo, may bag-ibang dumaan na nagustuhan ninyo, isisipain nyo na at patatalsikin nyo na yung asawang sinumpaan nyo sa Panginoon na magiging partner nyo buong buhay. That is a divorce that God hates. What God hates about and in divorce is unfaithfulness of the man or the powerful one as the cause. Maybe now it could be a woman. Because marami na nga yung women more powerful than the husband, at least economically speaking. What God hates about and in divorce is the cruelty that accompanies it and the abuse of women or whoever is weaker. Still on the issue of divorce, Matthew 19, 7-9, Why then, they asked, did Moses command that a man give his wife a certificate of divorce and send her away? Jesus replied, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives because your hearts were hard. But it was not this way from the beginning. I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife except for sexual immorality 
and marries another woman, commits adultery. Sabi ko nga yun ng Diyos ng divorce, eh bakit si Moses nagturo na gumawa ng certificate of divorce? Ibig sabihin, tinatanggap ni Moses ang divorce. Sabi ni Lord, sobra kasi titigas ng ulo nyo. Hindi kayo mapaawat at mapigil. Kaya niregulate na lang ni Moses. At least sinabihan kayo magbigay kayo ng certificate of divorce. Bakit? Hindi divorce kita, verbal lang. I don't like you, I don't like you, I don't like you. Di divorce na. Tapos makikisipin siya sa iba. Tapos babalikan ka, ibigpilit na asawa ko pa uli. At least may ilalabas kang certificate. Oy, eto certificate, di divorce mo na ako. No? Huwag ka nang bumalik dito. Kaya protection na naman ng women yung certificate. At kung dinivorce siya na hindi naman dahil sa immorality, tapos may lalaking naawa sa kanya o humibig at gustong samahan siya sa kanyang buong buhay, iba pakita niyo, oh, divorce ako, certificate ito, so I'm free. Meron siyang chance. Kaya yung regulation na yon again, to protect the aggrieved party from lifelong suffering just because she was abused by this man who just dismissed her from his life. Dapat inuunawa natin yung lahat ng mga teaching sa divorce, hindi yung basasal mo, God hates divorce, don't divorce. Si judge mo lahat ng mga divorce people. We don't know what happens in people's lives. We don't know why they had to divorce. Kaya dapat hindi mo ginagamit yung verse para mang oppress. In fact, the verse, when used correctly, sets free. The man, the instigator of the divorce, is the guilty party if the reason is for his own adultery and the conduct is cruel. If he wants a divorce and then the man who remarries commits adultery. So you see, the burden goes to the one who wants a divorce for very flimsy and shallow reasons. The woman in this case is presented as the kawawa one. Yung mga iba kasi nung araw, they want divorce just for a marriage. Kahit wala naman talagang offense. Sabi, alam nyo, ang talagang pwede nyo i-divorce ang wife nyo kung adulterous. Dahil sinira niya yung covenant nyo. Pero liban dyan, hindi dapat. Hindi mag-divorce kayo dahil mabaho ang panya. May lakas niya humilik. Mga kung ano anong mga irreconcilable ng mga differences na iniimbento lang sa court. Pero actually, if you work together, work hard, you can resolve it. Matthew 19.9, I say that if your wife has not committed some terrible sexual sin, you must not divorce her to marry someone else. If you do, you are unfaithful. So, laging lumilinaw kung ano ibig sabihin nung ay, God hates divorce. Si Paul, sabi niya sa 1 Corinthians 7.10, To the married, I give this command. And then, inilinaw niya, Not I, but the Lord. A wife must not separate from her husband. Again, ano na naman ang reason? You must not separate from your husband dahil gusto mo lang sumama sa iba. Pero kung siya ay guilty of adultery, naging unfaithful siya sa inyo nun, then you have grounds because adultery is a ground for separation. Pero hihiwalay ka dahil lang may iba ka na gustuhan, so niya, you must never do that. It is important. Separation for selfish reasons is what God hates. But the separation is the one that will set you free from oppression, from a horrible, terrible, nightmarish life. Do you think God will condemn you? God is good. God is kind. Itong kasi sa culture ng maraming churches sa Itila Unipol, yung mga babae, mga prominente, nandidivorce ang asawa, mga ano sila, mga liberated. Kaya sinasabi ni Paul, ino-order ko sa lahat ng mga churches, 1 Corinthians 14, 33-34 For God is not a God of disorder, but of peace. As in all the churches of the saints, women should be silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but should be subordinate. Ngayon, ginagamit ng marami itong verse para pagbawalan lahat ng babae ngayong modern times na mag-preach, mag-teach, mag-lead. Remember, nung sinabi ni Paul that in all the churches of the saints, what he had in mind were the Corinthian churches the churches in the Greco-Roman world that he founded and he administered. And the women in those cities, in those places, were very aggressive sometimes. And they were the ones 
leading mga divorce proceedings and they are the ones usurping authority from people kaya sila pinawalan. But it was not meant to be a pagbabawal in all places at all times forever and ever. May specific recipient, may specific context, yung command. And once you misuse it, hindi mo na ngayon papayagan ang mga babae na magsalita, na maglilid dahil sabi, I forbid all people, all churches of the saints for the women to be silent in churches. Itanong mo, alin churches noon ang tinutukoy? At itatanong mo, kasali ba ang church natin sa tinutukoy? Ganun ba ang culture natin talaga? Dapat ba talaga kapusin at itali yung mga babae? O hindi naman. May context. Hindi mo pwedeng i-apply sa lahat ng tao yung sinabi ng isang Bible writer sa isang specific recipient. E paano yung sinabi kay Noah, gumawa ka ng barko? Gagawa ka dahil sa mo, gumawa ka ng barko. Ikaw ba kausap? Si Noah, di ba? So dapat, tinitingnan mo yun. Tayo ba yung kausap ng regulasyon na yun? Ba tayo nakikisali? Katulad nung ay, all women of Corinth should wear veil when you go to church. Eh, taga-Corinth ka ba? Ang ibig sabihin ba ng veil na yan? Eh, katulad din ang ibig sabihin sa atin. So niya, all women should wear long hair. Eh, kasi ang prostitutes noon sa Corinth, short ang hair. So sabi ni Paul, wear long hair. Eh ngayon, kung hindi naman ibig sabihin sa culture mo ng short hair, eh prostitute ka, required ka bang ganun? Dapat pinag-aaralan yung verse para hindi ka apply ng apply, nagiging oppressive tuloy. Remember, misreading leads to misleading. It's important to have a scholarly discourse before any verse is applied in people's lives. Now, partnership should be clear. Exclusive, committed, and honorable. Clear attachment. Matthew 19, 5-6, A man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. So clear yung attachment. Ang kapartner mo, yung asawa mo. Mahal mo yung nanay mo, mahal mo yung tatay mo, mahal mo yung kapatid mo, pero ang kapartner mo sa buhay, yung asawa mo, huwag ka malito, not even your children. It's your spouse. Yun na ang pagpapahalagaan ng Bible sa asawa. Hebrews 13.4 Have respect for marriage. Always be faithful to your partner because God will punish anyone who is immoral or unfaithful in marriage. So respect your marriage and respect the marriage of other people. Huwag kang makigulo at makisali sa partnership ng mag-amang kasawahan na hindi ka naman kasali. Proverbs 38 in the 19, There are three or four things I cannot understand. How eagles fly so high? Or how snakes crawl on rocks? How ships sail the ocean? Or how people fall in love? Mahiwaga daw talaga niya. But people fall in love, stay in love, but keep the love exclusive. Stay together as long as and whenever you could. Respect your spouse. Be nice to your spouse. Give to and forgive your spouse. Be faithful to your spouse. And grow together with your spouse. Mahirap yung you grow apart. Nagkakaiba ng mundo nyo, magkaiba na kayong mag-isip. Ang kasunod nun, hiwalayan. And enjoy life with your spouse. Paano yung mga hindi nabiyayaan ng asawa walang partner dahil walang available o dahil hindi pwede or for whatever reason, we should all be sensitive to those who don't have their own spouses. We should be kind and supportive of them. At yung mga walang asawa, hindi na magkakaasawa pa o gustong gusto pero wala naman, draw inspiration from Paul and other people in the Bible who are unmarried but nevertheless accomplished great things for the Lord and had full, meaningful lives. But if you are gifted by the Lord with a spouse, cherish your spouse. Hindi siya perfect. At kung perfect siya, hindi ka bagay sa kanya. So pasalamat ka, hindi siya perfect. Pareho lang kayo. Pahalagahan niyo ang inyong mga asawa. Laging patawarin, suportahan, unawain, may kanikanya rin mga pangangailangan. At tandaan niyo, ipaglaban niyo ito na tagalan, habaan ng pagsasama 
paiksiin na mga oras na hindi kayo magkasama. Panginoong Diyos, magpalain niyo po ang lahat ng mga meron ng binigay niyong kapartner sa buhay na maging maganda, makayos, matiwasay sa gana ang kanilang mga buhay ng magkasama. At sa mga wala naman Panginoon na ganitong uri ng biyaya na na-enjoy, teach everyone else to be supportive and to be kind and understanding. At nawa Panginoon, ang lahat makakita ng kasiyahan, kahulugan, at pagpapala mula sa inyo. Pagbulay-bulayan natin mga kapatid ang ating mga sinuri pinag-aralan. At nawa pagkalaoban tayo ng Panginoong Karunungan kung paano ito i-apply to the best benefit of families. Panginoon, gumuyo ko sa inyong harapan ng mga anak. Turuan nyo ng mga personal na application tungkol sa mga bagay na ito na mahiwaga, makapangyarihan, at dapat tumiral sa aming buhay. Be with the Lord in silent prayer. Ponder the meaning of these things in your personal life.